Welcome everyone to our first ENA Together virtual town hall of 2021. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. I'd also like to welcome members of the ENA Board of Directors who are here with us and already virtually mingling in the chat. Many of you are already doing the same and I encourage you all to engage in the chat throughout the next hour. Please submit your questions using the Q&A tab. We'll get to as many as we can. I also encourage you to share your stories, experiences, ask questions, and tell us about how ENA can continue to support you in 2021. Let's hear from as many as you as we can today. Also, as a reminder, this will be recorded for those who could not be here today, or if you just wanna watch me again. ENA started the virtual town halls last year to help bring as many of our members together to not just hear from people like me, but to give an opportunity for all of us to connect and check in throughout what's been an unprecedented year filled with uncertainty, emotional highs and lows, and certainly plenty of personal and professional issues. ENA's, ENA has tried to be constant for you, helping however and whenever we can. Even if it is for something as simple as creating an outlet such as this to remind everyone that ENA is a community, we are together and this community has perhaps never been more important to us than it is over the last year. Each town hall, we take a few minutes to pause and reflect. I wanna do it a little bit different and I truly hope you'll share some of your in on this simple exercise. It's just finishing a simple sentence. One year later, I feel blank. So one year later, I feel blank. Drop a word or a whole bunch of words in the chat to tell us how you're feeling. To get the ball rolling, I'll fill in the blank. Uh, one year later, I feel grateful uh, for the vaccine. Things are moving forward. Um, we're seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the other one I, I do, and I think I want to you know, recognize this, I feel a sense of loss. We, a lot of things have happened over the last year and a lot of things that didn't happen that we wanted to see happen. And so there is certainly a sense of loss and I, I have to myself personally recognize that as well and be okay with that so I can move forward. I see some great things coming in on the chat. Hopeful. Grateful as well. Tired, yes, Todd, yeah. Reflective. So Ron, we've got optimistic, we've got uh, emotionally exhausted, hopeful, thankful to have survived, you know, uh, COVID. Um, a lot of exhausted, optimistic, relieved and grateful. Um, looking for a brighter future from, uh, from Youp, uh, who's in the chat. Um, can breathe easier is another one that was mentioned. Um, overwhelmed, uh, Catherine Robinson uh, talks about overwhelmed encouraged, blessed, engaged, optimistic and emotionally drained, blessed, hopeful, proud, hopeful, but still stressed. Uh, Ron, I imagine you can identify with a lot of these, these things and, yeah. and certainly board members have, have chimed in as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just saw safer and vaccinated. I, I, I know personally, I got tearful when I got my vaccine. You know, it's just one of those things that like, whew, we're kind of getting closer to something uh, more normal. So thanks everyone for sharing your reflections. So now let's move on to some great ENA headlines. There's a lot happening around ENA, so I'm excited to share a few updates and other news that you'll wanna know and share with your ENA peers and friends. Feel free to spread all this great stuff using social media to propagate the good and positive news. First of all, let's talk about foundation. While, increase, while the increasing rate of COVID-19 vaccinations is a great sign, uh, where things ahead are headed in the pandemic, we know things are not entirely back to normal yet. ENA continues to support members during the pandemic with our vaccine and general COVID-19 resource pages, as well as ways to help your personal and professional well-being. The ENA Foundation recently reopened applications for the COVID-19 relief fund. So please share the word with members, colleagues that you know who might need a little assistance as we work till they get to the end of this pandemic. Visit the link on the screen, or the link has been put in the chat for you to click on right now um, if you need to save it for later. And then also, I would, I would challenge everybody, if you've been in a, a position where you're fortunate and you haven't been affected that much, donate. Give back so that we can help those ones that may need a little bit of something. So if you want to donate, please visit enatogether.org. The next topic we'll hit on is the election. 
ENA's future leaders are out there among our members. The next step of that journey begins April 1st, when the annual call for ENA election candidates opens. As someone who's spent their entire emergency nursing career as a member of ENA, I can tell you there are so many dedicated and passionate ED nurses among us who have what it takes to be a great leader of the association. And the Nominations and Elections Committee is committed to not just slating the best candidates, but also helping develop those who are on track to become a candidate. So if you have any interest at all, for more information, go to ena.org slash elections. And also look for our upcoming ENA podcast episode with the Nominations and Election Chair, uh, Matt Powers, about the call for candidates in the 2021 ENA election. Give it a chance. It's, it's a very, very rewarding experience. So I would highly, highly encourage you to do that. The next thing we'd like to talk about is DEI. Speaking of the ENA podcast, I recently, it recently featured Anna Valdez, the chair of ENA's Diversity, Equity, Inclusivity Committee, as she offered a look at what this recently formed committee is looking to accomplish for the organization in 2021. ENA's DEI focus was also highlighted in the February issue of ENA Connection. And if you haven't listened to that podcast yet, that's on your to-do list before five o'clock today. Before your end of the business today, listen to that podcast. It is great. Uh, I'm proud to see how ENA has embraced these issues at a new level in the past year by first pledging to advance the important conversations around issues such as systemic racism and also dedicating a full day of education during the EN20X Encore Day that focused on diversity issues in healthcare. And the work is far from done. And ENA is doing its part to learn and grow like many of us are. Our DEI committee, a, a board, a DEI committee, a board subcommittee, and a staff level team are shaping the association's vision, vision on these important areas to improve emergency nursing, build relationships with key partners, and driving change with the following key 2021 DEI initiatives. First of all, develop and deploy surveys. Work to strengthen ENA's external presence on DEA, DEI engagement. Meaningful work to foster a leadership pipeline for the under, underrepresented groups. Develop EN21 DEI session and experience. DEI webpage with resources. And then a staff DEI awareness campaign, ongoing celebration and recognition of diversity. The next topic, which is so awesome. I'm so excited about this. Uh, ENA University. Education at its core of ENA's mission to advance excellence in emergency nursing. And we've got something big, I mean, huge in the works. ENA is reimagining its education and resources to create a, a complete emergency nursing continuing education experience. We are excited to launch later this year called ENA University. ENAU, I mean, maybe we got to get some swag, like some hats and sweatshirts and stuff that says ENAU, uh, will be our new center of excellence for tailored continued education, offering a unique personalized pathways that will allow you to choose the direction of your learning experience through robust educational content, innovative delivery, partner education, and thriving community of ED nurses to support you in the learning journey. Stay tuned for more information throughout the year as this exciting new initiative kind of comes and molds out. So stay tuned. This is going to be so good. So good. I promise you. The next issue we'd like to talk about, not issue, topic, news. Uh, you are the first to hear the big announcement. ENA is now offering contact hours for ESI training courses. Beginning today, St. Patty's Day, you can claim seven CNEs when you take the English or the Spanish language versions of the adult pediatric course. You will now be able to claim six CNE for the ESI pediatric course. We all know how important high quality triage education is to every ED nurse. So the addition to contact hours for taking the training just adds to the value of an already tremendously valuable course. Because these questions are likely brewing, let me say there is no price change for the course at this time. And if you complete the course, this is cool. And if you completed the course between February, 2020 and today, you can claim the contact hours. So that's awesome. Uh, learn more about everything ESI at, by visiting ena.org slash ESI. All right, now get your pens and paper out. Let's talk about some key dates. Mark your calendars and start making plans for two of ENA's most important events this year. 
Registration is now open for our fully virtual Day Off the Hill advocacy training event on May 11th. For the first time, any ENA member can attend, but space is limited, so visit ENA.org slash events slash Day Off the Hill today to sign up and make your voice heard in Washington, D.C. We all know the great job our government relations team does to advocate for emergency nurses. Look at everything they've done on the COVID era to make sure our priorities are known on Capitol Hill. Day Off the Hill is an outstanding opportunity for all of our members to learn more about how we can be more effective advocates at the federal and state levels. So encourage your members to log in and register. And registration for the big one. Emergency Nursing 2021 is just around the corner in April. ENA is offering an in-person and virtual option. So whether you want to join us in Orlando or from your home, you can be part of the best educational conference dedicated to emergency nursing. You can also take advantage of our first ever group rate. Check this out. Register five people and get a sixth registration for free. That's awesome. So get your group of buddies together and let's start registering in packs of six. All right. There's much more to come about EN21, so watch your email and ENA social updates, social media updates in the coming weeks. And I will tell you, what we got planned is going to, if you like the EN20X, uh, this is going to blow it away. All right, so stay tuned. And then, uh, so that was definitely a lot of news to digest in a short amount of time. So let's check in on questions or comments from the audience. So Dan, who's yep. been the and monitoring the chat. So we've got a couple of questions that were uh, submitted ahead of time and uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. So uh, we'll start off, let's go back to COVID for a second here. Um, certainly each state has, has dealt with its own set of circumstances uh, throughout this pandemic and certainly uh, more recently uh, with some changes to restrictions and, and regulations from uh, state to state. Um, so the question came in was along the lines of, will ENA be taking a position on um, really what states are doing when it comes to things like discontinuing mask mandates or, or other things of that nature? Uh, Ron, you want to speak a little bit from ENA's perspective of, of what our recommendations may be, um, you know, at this point? And it's pretty consistent to what we've been doing. Yeah, you know, for consistency purposes, uh, ENA's position would be on whatever the recommendation for the CDC and the WHO is. Um, to continue that process and, and kind of just stick with that mantra as we always have. And as we know, it's, it changes and it pivots and, you know, tomorrow might look different than the next day, but going along with the citing, uh, with the citing and the recommendations from the CDC. So uh, Ron, I, I, this is a, a question that is kind of on the fly here because information about the, uh, the changes with ESI are, are, are going to be uh, announced more fully here in the next hour or so. Uh, but the question was about how to go about claiming your, uh, your CE if you've taken the course between February 20th, uh, February 2020 and today. Uh, more information on how you will be able to do that will be uh, in an email and through some social media that'll be coming out later today. So uh, please keep an eye on your emails for uh, how you will go to claim if you've already completed it uh, within that window that we described. Uh, going back into the Q&A here. Um, so this question, um, this one, I don't know that we, we can, we have a true answer on this, but uh, there was a survey uh, recently about state leaders possibly gathering this year. Um, Ron, do you have any you know, updates generally about whether those plans are moving forward or is that something we, uh, we can follow up on? Yeah, we're, we're still discussing that. I know a survey was sent out to the state leaders um, and we're looking at that as, a, as the board um, here at the board of directors meeting on Friday. Uh, so that is one thing that we're gonna be discussing on the possibility of that. And you guys will be the first to know as soon as the decision is made. So another question uh, relating back to EN21, uh, the question was about uh, General Assembly and what we're looking at with General Assembly. Uh, Ron, I know we talked about that a little bit earlier. You wanna share some thoughts on uh, what the plans are as of today for, for GA? Sure, and, and as, as the phrase always been all through during this COVID, as of today, uh, so as, you, as you're aware, uh, the plans are to hold EN21 and General Assembly in Florida, the state of Florida. Currently, the state of Florida has a 50% capacity and working with the meeting services and talking with some of the senior leadership team, um, the room, I can tell you the room that we're planning on holding GA in can hold 2,000 people. So at 50%, it can hold 1,000 people and be socially distanced at this time. So right now, all the planning is moving forward to in-person general assembly 
with the current guidelines. And as those guidelines change and, and ebb and flow, we will, we will pivot uh, as necessary. Uh, that's the questions we have for right now. So certainly if anybody has additional questions, thoughts, or, or reflections, you know, continue to put those into the Q&A or into the chat and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have time at the end here for some more uh, thoughts and questions uh, to be shared. So uh, I think you can take it from there, Ron. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. Thanks everybody for your questions too. Uh, so shifting gears here, let's talk about leadership development a little bit. Uh, as identified in the strategic plan, ENA strives to employ the best practices in leadership and governance. It's important that we ensure that we have the best processes to place an identity and develop future leaders to help lead ENA into the future. ENA is committed to identifying opportunities to improve our competency-based election processes and seeking your input in guiding future plans. So the board's been working on the following initiatives over the past year. We've been working with the Nominations and Elections Committee to revise the board and the Nominations and Elections Committee competencies to ensure that the right competencies are in place for a strong organizational leadership. We wanted to make sure those matched up great. Uh, also creating tools and resources for evaluating individual board member performance. Uh, this provides an opportunity for growth and development of the leaders. Think of it as a self-reflected, like you got everybody does at work, right? That we're gonna do that competency-based uh, evaluation of each of ourselves and the, and the, and the board as well. Um, and as the boards looks to continue to keep leadership development as a key area of focus, we'd like to kind of get a pulse uh, from the group on what more ENA can be doing in this area. Uh, so we're gonna go to a poll question first. And the question is on the screen there, how important to you is developing, a developing future leaders for the association? Give you a minute here or so to answer that poll. Here comes the poll, should be flashed up on your screen right now. So very important, important, slightly important, or not important. So I think, Dan, you can probably see how many responses we had. So I'll gauge off of you whenever you. Yeah, so we've got, uh, got 82 votes and 79%, uh, the majority was uh, very important. Um, and then followed you know, with 16% important and then 5% uh, total said slightly important or not important. Awesome, thank you for your participation. And as we keep working through that, if, you know, I, I, I jokingly said something the other day, uh, um, uh, Ron's random thoughts. So as, as, you, as those pop up in your, you got questions or ideas or qu anything about anything, pop it in the chat and we can uh, capture that and get back to you. Uh, any feedback on current initiatives? So this is, these are open-ended questions, sorry. So the next one is, any feedback on current initiatives? This you can throw into the chat. Or, uh, you know, some people like to reflect a little bit on the question, and that's awesome. Uh, you know how to get a hold of us. Feel free to send us through, through our social media contacts or email or call the office. Um, See, Ron, while people throw in some of their thoughts about uh, this particular question, um, share a little bit about your journey. You know, how you decided to take that first leap into to leadership. Wow, yeah, you know, it was... Like uh, like many of us, I think we showed up at one uh, council or, or chapter meeting and uh, something to do, and I got roped into volunteering to do something. And it's kind of, you know, I, and I've said this before. I, I've you, you kind of found your people, right? Uh, you know, ED nurses are the only people. The only people who understand us is us. So it was it was it was, it was a logical fit for me. Uh, there was great mentorships I had in my local chapter and then in the state council. I, did some stuff for the chapter and then up to the state council. And, and I, will, I will tell you that where I really got hooked uh, for a national aspect is when I came to General Assembly. That really hooked, hooked it for me. And I was like, this is something I wanna do. I and mean, I felt that I had something to offer. Um, so I tried to better myself and look around and grab mentors and ask questions and seek kind of that development so I could be the best that I could be here. 
Anyway, we've got some other comments. Um, nothing, nothing in particular with this this okay. question. So you can I think, okay. move on to the next one. And people do have answers um, related yeah. to this. They can either drop it into the chat, or as you mentioned, they can uh, email uh, you know their board liaison, or they can uh, email ENA Direct. Yeah, absolutely. If you marinate on a little bit, and you got something that comes to your head, let us know. So the next question: Any suggestions for additional actions ENA can undertake to focus on leadership development for our members? This one again might be one you have to marinate on. Ron, what's a question you get often from people who are in leadership and are, are deciding whether they wanna move up the ranks at the state level or then move up or move from working at the state level to putting their hat in the ring, as you mentioned earlier, you know, for the call for candidates for the national or now the, you know, much, we're much bigger than national level, but for the ENA election in general. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the big things that people ask is like time commitment. Um, so you just have to be honest with that, uh, you know, at the state and uh, state and council levels and the chapter levels, you know, it might be not much, but I would always say, uh, encourage people to take a self-reflection and self-evaluation of like, so how much time can you give? Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's something small that you can give at the chapter level or the council level, you know, you don't have to run, try to run the whole thing. And, you know, and, and always just remember that it's a, it's a volunteer association it's a volunteer position so you do the best you can and i guess some people are like i don't know how to get involved you know drag them to a meeting first of all and then kind of take them under the under your wing i think that's how we that's how we're going to develop our future leaders is people that are leaders now need to grab somebody identify them as a future leader and help mentor them through that whole process so you know i, I know one of the things that we always hear all the time over and over again is recycling of officers and recycling of the same people doing it the same thing. So I would challenge the next time that wants to come out of your mouth. Uh, wow, we always recycle. Well, let's go recruit. Let's change it from recycle to let's go recruit and grab some of those people to make it happen. So Ron, we do have a few uh, comments that kind of cover the, the spectrum of what we've been talking about from leadership. Um, first comment from Rebecca Wood, I would love education resources for budgeting, staffing, and productivity. Uh, she mentioned that she did watch, watch the staffing resource uh, content on the ENA website. Um, obviously, that kind of crosses, you know, a couple of different, you know, different areas. But um, what, are your, what are your thoughts in that respect, in terms of how that, um, you know, can help inspire or drive some more from from a, a leadership development side? Well, might go to the first part again, Dan. I'm sorry. Just about education and resources for budgeting, and and then it gets into like staffing and productivity, which I think may ex go beyond just like uh, an ENA chapter or state, and more into how to operate within an ED. But you know, education and resources for how to you know essentially run uh, run a chapter or to you know to do some of those components that are key to uh, to making sure that a chapter or, or any group is, is successful. Um, you know, leadership orientation is a great opportunity for a lot of that learning, but there's learning needed all year round. I, I assume you'd agree. Yeah, yeah, I 100%. And, and, and again, it's like many of the things we do and work, we don't have to recreate the will. It's already there. Uh, you just got to ask. You got to know where to find it, right? I mean, it, it's already been done for you, uh, and we just got to reach out to do it. And, and again, that's that's allows somebody can ask that question, but really, it's us it's us as leaders to push that, push that information down to those people that are thinking about becoming up and coming leaders. Uh, next uh, comment is uh, in terms of leadership development, uh, better promotion of the AEN mentoring program. Um, this is Adam Johnson from North Dakota saying, I found some great support through that program and think it would be really helpful for anyone moving toward future leadership. Uh, Ron, certainly there's a wealth of information within AEN and especially in the mentoring program. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about you know, engaging, you know, bringing those, those groups together you know, to help uh, you know, build some rapport and, and help in that development process? Absolutely. I mean, that, that, you know, I think it's way underutilized. Uh, I've told that to a lot of people that are fellows. I mean, there's a lot of intellectual knowledge and experience housed in that, that we can just tap into. And um, so if you're thinking about being a leader, you know, reach out, reach out and, and grab a mentor. And, it, you know, it doesn't have to be this, you know, this really stale, static, what mentor, I mean, it can be just chats. I mean, I think it's great now. I mean, Adam brought that up. Adam and I, uh, you know, I've, I've helped mentor him a little bit too. And we, we just, you know, we grab Zoom calls here and there or text back and forth. And so it doesn't have to be this big formal process, but reach out and grab, grab somebody 
And then if you are somebody with experience, again, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to look, look through that, get your binoculars out and identify some of our future leaders. Ron, you also want to promote the fact that uh, there's a bunch of board members that you know, certainly have a variety of experiences in leadership and, and the, the value of, of their, their information or, like you said, those informal conversations and you know, loading up their email boxes for people who are curious about you know, what it takes and, and what's involved with you know, doing something even at this level. Because the, uh, the board just doesn't meet four times a year. They're active throughout and their experience level certainly grows every year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So they're, they're, that's a that's a high, I guess you would say, high profile people that you would see because you see our pictures and stuff uh, everywhere. Those are certainly uh, people to grab to, and uh, yeah. And then I saw where you know in the ENA Connect community, that's that's where you grab some stuff, throw some. It may it may might start off with just a, a quick question about something you do in your department and how you do other people do it in other departments, and next thing you know, it's a connection, and then you're. I don't know. And then the next thing you know, you got this little connection, you got, you got this mentoring process going on and you learn from each other. So uh, something that you tied into earlier when we talked about DEI, but one of the, the suggestions from Kathleen Quinlan was increased diversity and increased membership from areas and different size EDs. Uh, I, I imagine that's, uh, you know, that's been the ultimate goal for many years with, with ENA is to, to broaden out uh, the diversity, uh, you know, in all the different ways that, it, that our membership can be diverse, not just, uh, um, the, where people are from, but also their their backgrounds and, and different uh, you know different populations. Uh, so I, I imagine that's a no brainer, uh, Ron. What are what, what would you say is a way that um, you know even whether you want to be into get into leadership as a whole? I mean, there are membership chairs that are out there. You know, is there a thought that you have about how they can uh, do some of that recruiting that you mentioned earlier and looking at some of those different places to find new members? Yeah, I think you know. That, that comment really brings up something interesting that I see a lot go on. And I think probably a lot of people can uh, relate to this. You know, sometimes you get a chapter and it's all one hospital. Uh, so, you know, you know, St. You know, Mary's over here is everybody goes to works at St. Mary's. So you got St. Joe over here that doesn't really know anybody from St. Mary's. So they don't want to go to the meetings. And so, you know, there I challenge again is to be welcoming. Uh, you know, when I was the state council president for Indiana, one of the things I asked our board to do was, because it, it's hard, right? We, we get together every other month and we become friends and you start talking to, to each other when you come in the door and we, we mingle and have, have a great time with each other. And then all of a sudden a new person shows up and they're kind of over here in the corner um, and we're not really being inclusive. Uh, so, you know, if somebody takes that effort, I don't know if you remember that first meeting you went to or whatever, but it, they took that effort to get in that room and we need to make sure that we scoop them up and bring them into our group. And it, sometimes that can be hard because we kind of get self on ourselves because we haven't seen our buddies and friends for a couple months and we kind of just start talking and we, we don't allow that person to be in. So that's, that's another example of including them into that. So. so this has been referenced, so I'll just kind of craft a question out of it, but the idea of emerging professionals and um, this is now the fourth year that the board has had an emerging professional liaison and uh, as has been talked about in things like Morning Brew, self, shameless self plug for Morning Brew and, and the ENA podcast coming <laughs> from me. Um, but, you know, Amy, uh, Amy Purcelli certainly took a different way. She's been in leadership and now she's the emerging professional. But in your experience, Ron, the, the value of, of engaging that group and seeing the emerging professional population continue to grow because as somebody referenced in the chat, the, you know, the future of ENA is out there and how, how can we continue to bring them in? So what, what are your thoughts about how that the EP population population can really be a driver for that leadership development. Yeah, I, I think, you know, that, that's a key key there as well. And I, I think, you know, at ENA, we, we look to try to target that, that group as well. And I know coming up for EN21, EN uh, you know, we have a newbies meet and greet or whatever, which was just in Austin, that thing was fantastic. I had the opportunity to go there and it was just the the buzz in the room was just amazing and very, very, very positive. And I can't even imagine what it's uh, going to be like in, in Orlando in, in the fall. So, you know, those, those things as well as grabbing some of those emerging professionals that you see, you know, uh, those firecrackers we work with at work, you know, the, grab them, bring them to a meeting, get them hopped into ENA. So another suggestion uh, in terms of you know uh, other actions ENA can undertake, the description uh, is, or the comment is perhaps a self-reflection and readiness program geared toward members that aspire to move from the state level to higher level 
uh, within the organization, you know, that helps with the competencies and expectations they will encounter. Uh, Ron, what do you what do you think in terms of um, you know? I know that the NEC is is you know, continually working on on the competencies, and certainly um, they're helping candidates understand what their readiness is. Um, how much more you know do you think you know that realm would benefit you know people who maybe are kind of on the fence or maybe are a year or two away from being ready, but at least knowing what they need to to make that jump? I, I think that's a fantastic idea, and and and, and that's a, that's just an example of what we're kind of really wanting. Um, you know, the we're a really smart group. Uh, so when you have an idea, let's shoot it, throw it, throw it to one of the board, board members, um, shoot it at the, the staff at the office. And then we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll manipulate that and move that around and throw that as ideas. I mean, like, like I mentioned before, the nominations elections committee is really working hard on trying to not only set a slate of candidates, but find and mentor, maybe not the one that's going to run this year, but maybe two years from now. And, and kind of look at those competencies and say, hey, you know, we really want somebody with a, you know, a high competency in here. And then you do a self-reflection and look at it and say, wow, that's an area that I, I'm, that I'm a little bit, that I have an opportunity to be uh, a little bit better in. So seek out whether that's internal for ENA or external out. You know, for me personally, I'm going to give a, a plug to a group that I think is just amazing. And that's the Toastmasters International Club is the ability to connect with them and be a better public speaker, those are so essential. And it was just, it was a really self uh, awareness that I had that I needed to improve on. And, and that's that, I just seek that out because that was an opportunity that I felt I could do a little bit better in, so. I think that's it from the, the questions and the, the other themes, uh, just so that, Ron, I know you don't see the chat, but there's a lot of shout outs to uh, individual mentors that uh, the different members are mentioning. And, um, you know, uh, the board is, is stepping up and say, yeah, don't, uh, you know, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to them. You know, their, their email addresses are on the website, but certainly people are reaching out, you know, through the chat as well. If people have individual comments. So um, if there's anything, if there's nothing else at this point. So I, I think you're, you're good to move forward. And if you got any final thoughts on leadership development overall. No, I think that's it. I think, you know, again, I've, I've harped on it quite a bit here in the last few minutes, but I mean, it really is up to us to go find them. They're out there. They're out there. Uh, you know, one of the coolest things, you know, before COVID took it away from us is the, the travel, the opportunity for to go and make state visits. And I just, I would walk away from those state visits just so energized. To, I'm just like, I was just like amazed. I'm like, oh my God, how many amazing people we have in this association? And and so they're out there and let's just find them and help mentor them and get them, get them to the point where we want to be. So I guess we'll move on then. Yes, uh, the, ne the next slide is uh, open up the floor for some open conversations to follow up on a few questions submitted during the registration in which we, we talked, we, I think we hit upon some of those, Dan, if we have any more, we can certainly talk about them. But let me start by asking, what's on the screen there? How, how else can we support you? How do you want others to know you're supporting them? You know, as a reminder, my presidential theme is to elevate. And so how do we elevate each other? How do we elevate ourselves, our profession, our specialty of emergency department nursing, and also you know, ENA as a whole? So you can throw up any ideas or so while we're waiting for to see if any others come in, Ron, um, if you can, why don't you reiterate a little bit of what you talked about earlier in case some people came in late about uh, the plans for EN21 in terms of uh, the design and the, the registration options, but also uh, General Assembly and, and what the plans look like as of today in this ever-changing environment. Right. Yeah, just a reminder, if you, if you joined late a little bit, for the plans for EN21 in Orlando, Florida in September are, are moving forward. And we're doing that under the current guidelines of the CDC and then also the state of Florida. Closely watching that all the time. You know, as, as you know, um, as of now, as, turns, as I said earlier, is the phrase that we've all been uh, come to love and maybe sometimes hate. But as of now, that's what we're doing with the current guidelines. And we're able to pivot uh, as we need to. You know, for General Assembly, there, there will be an option for an EN 21X for the educational aspect of the conference. There'll be an in-person, as of now, in in-person and a virtual uh, opportunity for everybody. And then, and more specific for the General Assembly, uh, we do have right now. Florida operates at a 50/50 capacity. Uh, the room that we have set up right now for General Assembly can hold up to 2,000 people. So 
So 50, 50% of that is a thousand. We have less than that for GA. So we can be at the current guidelines, socially distanced and all fit into a room for general assembly in person in 2021 as of now. So uh, just a couple other uh, quick things. So Ron, there is a um, couple questions about the education. So I'll just I'll kind of you know, fill in the blanks there. Uh, a lot more is to come about the design of the education for the in-person and the, the, the virtual option. So um, as we get closer to registration in April, more information will come out about uh, what you can expect through either of those options. Um, uh, there's a, a comment here, you know, from from Sally Snow. I, I'm sure, Ron, you would have no objection to a shout out for the Ian Strong Challenge, which is going on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sally, for bringing that up. Uh, the, the Ian Strong Challenge uh, for the foundation. Uh, again, I ask you, if you if you're in a, in a position where you haven't been affected like some other people have been, and you've been fortunate, that aspect that's that's the time to give back. That's that's the time to to pay it forward. Right, so that's that's a big challenge to for the foundation as well. Yep. Um, and then there's a couple other education questions and comments uh, in the mix right now. So again, you can people can uh, look for more information as registration gets um, gets closer here in the next month or so. So watch your email and social for that. Um, and then uh, just a, another question in terms about general assembly, which uh, Ron, I, I don't think I know this answer, but um, based off the, what we've seen, uh, general assembly, you talked about the room that's being held in the same location as everything else, right? At the convention yeah, center. Yeah, that's correct. I did see, I did actually see that pop up on the chat. So right now, it, it, Orlando, Florida, I'm assuming it's probably going to be in the convention center. Um, I would guess, yeah, but Orlando. Uh, that's it for any questions. I mean, we can give another second or two if anybody else, uh, but certainly you know, we appreciate everybody's uh, comments and questions. Um, and this has all been recorded. So if people uh, missed a question or missed some information, um, this will be available uh, soon. I always forget the amount of time before the recording is available. Yeah, thanks for that reminder again, Dan, that it's gonna be recorded to you know, encourage other officers or other members or people that uh, maybe you work with that are not members, uh, Show them this video and see what kind of the excitement is going on and why they should be a member of ENA. So as we wrap up, I just want to say thank you to everyone for taking time out of your day and your busy schedules to be part of this latest ENA, ENA Together Town Hall. I can't wait till we can see each other's smiling faces in person. Uh, I think we all feel that way. Uh, let's keep doing our parts to make sure we get together and I, I, again sooner rather than later. Keep encouraging your family and your friends to educate themselves on the COVID-19 vaccines so they're ready to roll up their sleeve when it's their turn. Um, and while we're waiting for that day, remind them to keep in their mask up, washing their hands, watching their symptoms, and socially distance. Uh, we've been the most trusted profession for 19 years. So let's lead by example and help get us all back to all the things that we've missed over the last 12 months. Lastly, I'm gonna steal something Mike Hastings said during these town halls last year. Uh, ENA together is not just a hashtag. It's a shared feeling within this very special community of amazing people. You are what keeps ENA strong and moving forward with a purpose. So friends, until next time, take care of yourselves and have a happy and safe St. Patty's Day. Aaron Gobrock.